strategy and the risk is the most important part. People are looking for the, the secret sauce, the secret thing they can put on their chart that's going to make them super successful. But the thing is, it's about managing your risk. If you protect your risk or you protect your capital at all times, that's going to help you to keep trading. I always think of things like boxing. Boxing is my favourite thing other than trading. Well, actually it's probably more my favourite thing than that. Um, and you know, it, it gets to a point in a fight when someone is winning, clearly, and the other guy has, hasn't got a chance. And inevitably the boxer, because of the bravado and that kind of thing, the ego, wants to continue. Things might turn around at some point. But it's up to the, the team in the corner at that point to throw in the towel. So you can survive to fight another day, to, to go and have more matches and have a chance to win eventually. I think this is the same with how we are in the markets. So when we open trades, inevitably our ego goes with it. It's very difficult, especially at the start, to, to leave your ego behind when you're starting to trade. We take it with us and at the start it's really difficult to not take losses personally. So you think that every time you lose a trade or every time you open a trade, it's sort of a reflection of yourself rather than your strategy. So when you win trades, you feel good, like I've made the right decision. When you lose trades, then it's like, oh, I must have effed up at that point, like I've done something wrong. And we need to start to realize that winning and losing are both parts of trading. It's like two sides of the same coin. We've got to have both. When, we, when we're going for our exit strategy, we always want an anchor point before our exit. It's got to be something that's happened previously on the chart to, to use as our anchor point for a stop loss where beyond that point, we're no longer engaged in the setup, so we're in what we call the grey zone. It's like limbo. You know, when people say you're in limbo, you're between the living and the dead, and you don't know where you are, it's kind of that. Because if you're in a losing trade, if you're not in a setup, you're as good as dead. And if you're in the setup, then you've got a good chance of succeeding. And by the way, if you're in a setup where it's good, your analysis could be absolutely perfect, everything's spot on, perfect, most perfect setup you could possibly get, highest success probability, Perfect risk, everything, and it can still fail. It just happens. Go and take it personally. You know, people say the trend is your friends, and they'll just jump into the trade based on the trend, and that's it. No setup or anything. There's, there's an element to that that's going to be successful for them because if the market's in a trend and the structure's in your favour, there's something on your side. So, if like 60% of the time, 50% of the time, whatever, at this point the market's going to reverse straight away, brilliant. But it doesn't mean that we want to exit just at that point if it's not the case for us. On the other hand, if we're doing the same entry going long and it's a downtrend at that point, so we're exclude this bit, we're in a downtrend, there's nothing else in our favour at that point because we're in a downtrend, everything's against us, so all we're relying on is that 60%, which is also why our position size when we're in a trade like that is going to be lower because the risk is higher than in a situation where we're entering up here. So you take into account the different things that are on your side, try and let them play out or give them the room to play out. Everything's this way, um, everything's heading this way structure-wise, the sort of significant levels of stuff, if you think about horizontal ones, are all going to be based on what's happened here. So this is the path of resistance going this way, everything's against you in a, in a way that you, all you've got in your favour is this, the setup that you've had. So you want to reduce your risk as a result of that. Therefore you want a tighter stop, that's one way to reduce risk, Come into a second and you're going to have a lower position size. Got it? Any questions? So at that point, not only has your baseline trend line that you had there been broken, which is one, a sign that you know, potentially something's up, yeah, that's also wrong. Higher, higher. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the higher higher, you haven't yet got a higher low, but already there's uncertainty because you're in that middle ground. Okay. So you want to be out of it because you want certainty. There's always a chance you can find a re-entry and go with the trend again. Yeah. I'd rather take a small loss and have certainty and then get bigger profit afterwards. The situation with a pro trade is that a pro trade you're putting a position in the market with the intent that if it goes like if it goes in your favour or against you or whatever, you have the potential to add more to make it a full trade. So, I'll explain the second situations where you'd use that, but to put in perspective of what the calculation is, let's say that you have a, a trade where the setup calls for a maximum of 1%. Given the context of the market, you decide that the actual maximum you'd be willing to risk is 0.8%, because it's not quite at the sort of best version of that setup. Then you look at your chart, 
and you see that because of a structure with significant levels and so on, you think, okay, it's best just to put a probe trade at that point, in which case you open with 0.4%, so half the amount, or it might, you might decide it's less. Like when it's situations where it can go one of two ways, but you don't want to miss out on that setup, but you don't want to commit to the full trade, you can always add to it afterwards. It's the only time I ever allow myself to enter more money on a losing trade. You should never ever enter on a losing trade. I know people like to average down and stuff like that because if you enter at this point and the market keeps moving against you, you can get a lower entry point and it averages out to your overall average price is lower. But that's that's your basically opening trades on a whim then. If the trade goes against you, you're out of your setup, you're in the grey zone, you shouldn't be entering apart from in these situations when you see a significant level, you shouldn't be adding to your risk, you should be taking away from your risk on the initial entry. See? You sort of analyze the overall situation and you never increase your risk. The maximum you go to is that still the limit you had from the start. Nicholas Davos because everyone that's good at trading is called Nicholas. Uh, he, um, he had a system which allowed him to trade around his work schedule. So during the daytime he was a dancer, I'm not, and at night time he was like in the evenings he'd look at what's happened in the stock market during that day based on daily movements and place his trades on that. So since he wasn't there to see the markets actively to see how things were happening during the day, he figured out a system to still understand where movement's going to happen. His strategy, if you want to call it that, or his process or his tool, wouldn't work on its own. It just, if you actually go back in the charts and test it, it doesn't work. We have our own version of something similar, and to not look like we try to steal the idea, we do still call it Darvis boxes, but the Duomo variation, that's an important distinction. And basically what we say is that the boxes can be broken and create a new box on top, but they can also be extended. It's kind of starting to combine some of the different things that we use, reversal zones, uh, the Fibonacci ranges, the structure of the market, and putting it in an easier visual way, but in a way that we can now use the structure of the market differently. We learn a lot of new concepts, a lot of theoretical academic almost concepts if you like, uh, put them into practice, refine them. I think they're starting to sink in. It took you know, uh, a fair bit of time because some of them were quite complex and advanced, but uh, the key now is really to just put them into practice, I think. Good fun, very insightful day, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it.